Hey everyone, welcome to XAPI cohort. It's a special cohort with spring 2024. And I'll let Megan Torrance, who's going to kick us off, tell you what number cohort this is, because this has been something that's been around for a while. And before we get to Megan, who is presenting our first uh, cohort session, we're gonna go over a few little um, things that the Guild would like you to know about. And one of those first things is our research report. So we have take a deep dive into the heart of learning analytics with the latest research report. And I'm going to drop a link in chat. And there you go. That's where you can find that research report. It's a really great one. And we really hope that you will enjoy taking that and taking it for a read. And then, of course, for those of you who aren't familiar, we have learning and HR tech solutions coming up in April. This is formally our um, our learning solutions, and I posted the wrong link in chat, just one minute. It is formally learning solutions, and we have added the HR tech stack to it, and it is great. We have a lot of HR sessions, and we are looking at having uh, some of those sessions are going to be SHRM, HRCI, IHIM, and ATD are qualified for recertification credits. That's going to be coming down the pike. So if you ever have any of those certifications and you need to recertify, be on the lookout as to which sessions will qualify. And then of course, membership in the Guild. If you are not a member of the Guild, please consider joining. Not only do we have free sessions like this, and of course you don't have to be a member to be part of the XAAPI cohort, but we have free webinars. We have free research reports. We have membership specials like discounts to our face-to-face -face conferences and online conferences. And there's just a wealth of information there for the L&D community. And we would love for you to join us. Now, if you have joined us previously for cohort, this is something totally, totally new. We have some program partners, and you'll see some logos on there, including Vikey R. Gnome, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But these particular program partners are going to be part of our cohort, and we want to thank them. People from these companies are going to be supporting the cohort members in a special way. They will host various learning opportunities about different areas of XAPI that you can join. We'll have more information on that in a little bit, but basically we're going to help you through this. And all of these people here are going to help you through this. And Bikey is representing not a particular company, but Bikey is representing a, two ladies from a previous cohort. They're going to share what they learned as absolute newbies to learning all about XAPI. Now, as part of your confirmation, hopefully you all saw that confirmation page where you registered here for Airmeet and where there was a link for Slack. Now, if you were in a previous cohort, you, the, the, the uh, login information for Slack didn't change, but there was a link to join. Now, I'm just going to take you through a little bit of what you will see in the Slack channel. So we have, if you notice on the left-hand side, there's a lot of hashtag teams. Those are going to be uh, created by you and by the program partners to form yourselves into groups so that you can do some learning about XAPI. Some people will just do some learning and, and go through some of the basics of XAPI. Some people already have a project in mind and they're going to work on their project and get that storyline course, talking to XAPI and, you know, sending statements and getting results. So that's where the hashtag team are going to be the things that we create or you create during this cohort. Um, that I will show you how to create that in just a minute. There are other channel or other uh, yeah channels in the Slack workspace. You will see a bunch that say hashtag discuss and different topics. Feel free to jump in there and discuss things because 
we want you to really utilize the cohort as a place for you to delve into XAPI. As a peer learning community, discussing and talking back and forth would be really great for you to, you know, just kind of solidify your learning in this cohort. We also have hashtag main and main is super important because that's where you're going to post any general questions, team invites and announcements. That's where I will be in there posting announcements and so forth. Now, I told you I would take you on a journey of how to create a channel if you haven't had that experience in Slack. Basically, you go to the little carrot in channels, create, create channel, and then you have a name that for your channel. You're going to start it with hashtag team when you're putting together those learning groups, whatever it is, hashtag team, because that's how we're going to find you. If you want to put down hashtag Karen's team, people might not necessarily find it because I'm going to tell them to go look for hashtag teams to look for the new groups. Plus, we want to make sure you post that in hashtag main. So let's say you have a storyline course that you want to really work on this cohort. And you can say, I'm creating this. It's going to be hashtag team storyline Karen spring 2024. And you'll create that team. You'll take that um, hashtag You'll take it and post it into Maine and say, hey, everybody, I'm creating this channel for the team I'm creating. I'm going to work on a storyline course. Here's the course. This is what I'm doing. Please join me. And then people can find that uh, team and join the team. So that's what we're looking for for this cohort. Um, and then if you are looking for particular teams, hopefully everyone has posted in Maine and you're able to see, oh, team such and such. Yeah, I want to join that. You'll click on the hashtag. It'll ask you if you want to join. But let's say you aren't sure and you don't know what's been posted in the last week. Rather than, you know, going through and scrolling through the hashtag Maine, go to the channels, go to browse channels and you will be able to see the channels that are in the workspace. But I will caution you, you want to sort by the newest channels because this Slack workspace is old. And, and Megan will tell you how old it is, but it's old and there's a lot of team channels that have been archived or are older or not relevant right now. So you wanna make sure you look for the newest channels. Lastly, we have a lounge in Airmeet. And if you go back out to the reception, you'll see reception and you'll see lounge as I have it highlighted over here. So over there, you have tables. Doesn't matter. I don't think any of them are labeled right now, but there are tables out there. Go and meet with your team at a table 24 seven for the length of the cohort. Absolutely. You want to, and, and in at those tables, not only do you share your microphone and your camera, there's a chat, you can share your screen, you can have a little meeting with your team right after the session or at 10 o'clock tonight. It's up to you. But we give you this opportunity in AirMeet to meet on your schedule for your teams. So if you don't you can create your own table and put its name in there and tell everybody, I'm going to, you know, Team Storyline Karen uh, Spring 2024 table, and we'll sit down and meet and talk about what we want to learn and how we're going to run the project. And then lastly, everything is going to be recorded here for the cohort. And where you're gonna find those recordings is in AirMeet currently. So you would have to go, once you log in and go to that uh, reception page, you will see something that says view schedule, go to view schedule, you'll see this session, session one, and instead of a join button, you will see watch replay. And so go ahead, watch the replay. And it, it'll be a raw recording, just so you know, and um, you'll be able to see it then. That's my bit here of the um, cohort of how to interact with Slack, how to interact in AirMeet. Any questions you can direct to me. You've gotten some communications from me. I'm Karen Gleason. I'll drop my email in the chat. And with and that- Karen? 
Yes, ma'am. Karen, you've got a couple questions. In, I'm your producer. It feels like very much um, karma for me. <laughs> um, you've got a number of people who are asking how to get the link to Slack. So they made it here to Airmeet, but they're yep. looking for that Slack link. How do you get them connected? And I will give you the link to our confirmation page just to make sure that uh, hold on one second. Let me put that in the chat. So if you go to that particular web page, not only is it register for AirMeet, but it's also register for Slack and gives you more information. Also gives you some resources that we thought would be good for pre-reading. So I want you to go ahead, click that, and you'll see the stuff for Slack and be able to get in. And if you still have problems, just drop me an email and I'll help you out. Yes. And, and Karen, I just want to thank you too, because I know from past experience, just how much effort it takes to support thousands of people in the cohort, all asking, where's the Slack link? So thank you in advance on, a, on behalf of everybody you're going to help out this semester, uh, because you've got a pretty big job. Well, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Megan. You had it for so many years. Well, with that, I don't have a super proper introduction other than it is Megan Torrance with Torrance Learning X API. She's the chief energy officer and the founder here of X API cohort. And she's going to take us through her session, introduction to X API and cohort success. Over to you, awesome. Megan. Awesome. Thank you, Karen. And I will, um, with any luck, manage to get to the screen sharing properly. Wait for it. Wait for it. I think I'm sharing what I want to be sharing, right? All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for the uh, the thumbs up. I love the reactions. Um, so that uh, that helps keep me uh, keep keep me sure that I am in the right place. Well. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first of 12 weeks of free online community-based education around XAPI. Um, uh, those of you who've been in the cohort before and um, folks, you can join a uh, cohort every, some, some people do this for years. Um, and there'll be people who are here today who have been doing this for years. Um, so it, it really is a community. It's a place to come back to. Um, but one of the running jokes is that I drink a shocking amount of coffee uh, in order to uh, to do this. So I'm uh, uh, su super, super excited to, to be here, but uh, also super, super caffeinated. Uh, so I am, as Karen said, I'm the CEO uh, and founder at Torrance Learning. I do what you do. We build custom learning programs. We help with learning strategy. We, we assemble and navigate learning ecosystems. I teach, I facilitate, I coach, um, and uh in 2015, after a few years of um, or working through the XAPI learn or design cohorts that ADL put on, um, I decided that we would start hosting uh, XAPI learning cohort. Uh, and my team at Torrance Learning, thank you all team, you know you're there, um, uh, helped me run that for, for seven years. And so uh, we'll talk about that in, in just a bit. Um, but I'm passionate about professional development for this industry. I'm passionate about helping us do better than we've been able to do in the past. And um, that's really the spirit um, with which XAPI was created, but certainly the XAPI learning cohort. So let's talk about, I wanna talk a little bit about what the cohort is. I also wanna talk a lot about what is XAPI in the first place. Um, in case you're wondering or or in case you need to explain it to your boss who may be less technical than you. Um, and so let's make sure you have the, uh, the, 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 the verbiage that you need to translate that. And Javier, you have just made my day. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about cohort. We'll talk a little bit about what XAPI is. And then we're going to talk about how to be successful in cohort with your learning because this is a, a new new approach for learning so um xapi comes to you from the same folks who created scorm the advanced distributed learning group out of the u.s defense department and they ran um when they were first creating xapi the experience api they ran design cohorts bringing in a bunch of creators and innovators and entrepreneurs and just curious folks 
to experiment with this new way of tracking learning and performance activity and see how it works and see what the holes were and see what we could do with it. And it was a fantastic heady time. And then the ADL decided that they, they weren't gonna run the cohorts anymore. And I thought, oh, somebody has to do this because here's what happened. So Karen mentioned the gnome a little bit ago. Matt Cleaver, Meg Fairchild, Rob Houck and a few other people and I created a team where we built a project using XAPI. It was a mobile onboarding app for new hires. And um, oh, Allison Hass was involved on that first team, right? And she created, she created the persona of Bikey the Gnome who gets a job at a fish packing plant and needs to be onboarded. And we used XAPI to track web links and course ratings course completion, but also attendance at a manager meeting, a tour through an, a, a, a plant, a facility plant, um, a actual physical activity, right? So we had light meters and accelerometers and all sorts of things in which we were collecting data about learning that happened outside of a learning management system. We were super geeked. So Vikey the Gnome became our mascot for our project and then became mascot for the XAPI Learning Cohort. So Torrance Learning ran the XAPI Learning Cohort for seven years. The Learning Guild has been running it ever since. This is Learning Cohort. So not including the ADL cohorts. This is Learning Cohort number 18. There's Vikey. Hey, Vikey. Um, when, we, um, when we passed the the cohort sponsorship on to uh, the Learning Guild, uh, we, we got them, we got them their own bikey. So love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So uh, you'll see that out in Twitter. So when I think about the cohort, I think of this as a fun community-based way to learn with lots and lots of bumpers. Most of what we do here isn't, it, 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 it's prototype projects. Um, if you screw up, kind of like go-karts, if you screw up, you get gently bud nudged back into the main frame of thing. You're not going too fast, too far uh, to break things. And it's totally possible to experiment and try out new things here um, because that's what this is all about. So cohort, it's free. It's virtual. It's 12 weeks long. We're not going to track, track you. <laughs> um, it's learning by doing, right? And it's a community. In fact, if you find me out at conferences, hit me up because I usually have XAPI cohort stickers, right? So it is a community. The Slack community, if there are thousands of people there, which is why Karen showed you where all the, 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 um, the channels are to keep track of those commun communications, because there are thousands of people. There are brand new to XAPI folks. There are brand new to instructional design folks. There are very, very experienced people. There are software developers. There are product vendors. There are people who were involved in the creation of the XAPI spec itself who are in the XAPI cohort community. And so it is really, really a very, po a very powerful space, right? Um, cohort happens in two spaces. So one of these weekly web sessions, right, that Karen mentioned. So absolutely come here every single week um, or catch the recording. And the other are those Slack channels, right? And so uh, both of those will be followed up every week with a weekly email um, and links to the recording. So you have lots and lots of stuff that that you can um, take, take part in. And so let's talk for a minute if you're like, uh, X, 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 what, right? This moment is for you. Right. What I would like you to do, um, you do not actually, Abdullah, need to know JavaScript in order to do XAPI. That's actually the cool part about the evolution of XAPI and where we are right now as an industry. So here's what I'd like you to do in the chat, everybody. Put the numbers that is, are associated with where are you on your XAPI journey? Where are you on the journey? Okay, some zeros. <laughs> There's no zero. All right, ones and twos. 
Okay, I see some fours. I know you, Jeff, Mary. Every once in a while we get a five too. All right. One point five. Oh, we're getting creative there. I love this. Okay, five. Okay, so Christian, definitely right. Um, I love the fact that we've got folks right there. Are, there is XAPI out in the world being used um, on very, very large scale, right? Where where folks are are getting in and doing doing the thing. So, oh, hey, Mike, good to see you. Right, five, but also one. Ooh, right. Here's the thing, folks. Right, as the specific as the standard evolves, as your skills evolve, we're gonna stop. Nobody talks about SCORM anymore. I mean, some people talk about SCORM, but a lot of people don't talk about SCORM because it just works. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Minute, right? Um, we won't be talking about XAPI for a while or in a while because it'll just work. It'll just be its thing. Right? Okay, great. So now we've seen kind of who's out there, right? One of the ways I talk about XAPI is I ask folks, right, if you got a new job and you had the opportunity to choose between onboarding plan A and onboarding plan B, what would you choose and why? So go ahead and put your answers in the, in the chat here. What I often hear from folks is that they'd prefer onboarding plan B. Yeah, that's what's happening in the chat right now. Okay, why B? Well, it feels like more real world. It's adaptive to me and my job. It's not just e-learning. Right? I don't have a problem with e-learning. I cut my chops on e-learning, but that's not the only way people learn. Believe it or not, people actually learn when they're not connected to the internet or their LMS. <gasps> right? Now, I also, right? I love the idea of the B is reality, right? So here's the thing. The people who like A are often the people who are responsible for delivering a consistent and comprehensive plan and making sure everybody gets through it. I can, right, ensure completion of A. I know everything and how consistently it will be delivered in A. I can measure the progress of A. Why? Because of SCORM, right? And the way LMSs work. So when I have the power to deliver a rich and interactive and real world and personalized experience like B, but track it like A, that is the promise of XAPI right there in a slide that's about 10 years old, right? That's the promise of XAPI. Right, which is pretty, pretty powerful, right? Anna, Anna sums it up. A is easier to implement, easier to track, right? And easier to measure than B is, right, today. So XAPI comes from the Advanced Distributed Learning Group. I mentioned that a little bit ago. And the X stands for experience, right? We're not just tracking learning, we're not just tracking e-learning, we're tracking all sorts of things around the experience of learning, of practice, and actually doing, right? And actually doing. And so there's all sorts of things that are, um, uh, that, that are happening here in an experience capacity. Now, SCORM, so I'm going to go back in time a little bit. SCORM came out whew, about 25 years ago, give or take, right? And SCORM is fantastic. SCORM is a reliable, globally accepted, free standard by which we track the same things about every single e-learning course on the planet. I could run one big, I, I actually used to deploy, <laughs> I used to deploy learning management systems, right? And when I would deploy a learning management system, I used to work with UL for this, right? When I would deploy a learning management system, I knew in advance every single report that you would ever need from that LMS. You might sort it and, and compile it differently, but I knew before you even implemented it, everything you would ever need to get out of it. Why? because I knew the only data that was ever going to be available from it back then was SCORM, right? All in these nice, neat little packages. It's beautiful, it's interoperable, it's interchangeable, 
right? So I can hire any instructional designer. I can buy any course authoring platform. I can keep all my courses and I can swap out for any LMS and they all just use SCORM. And in theory, it works. And it requires no programming because all the tools already do it. I don't have to know where a single colon or bracket goes, which means for the cost of a laptop and $1,200 worth of software, I can be building e-learning that works in the learning management systems of the global 1000. Every military and government on the planet. Pretty amazing, but an incredibly limited vocabulary, right? An incredibly limited vocabulary. So XEPI, Right? See, seeks to solve that by instead of limiting it to a vocabulary, instead we're talking a grammar. And when I have a grammar, I can talk about anything. In fact, when I have a grammar, I can talk rich, long run on sentences and paragraphs full of detail, which gets to the JavaScript that was being discussed a moment ago. And it's kind of, I like to think about Admittedly, this is an unlicensed concept here, um, but I like to think about this like the Lego store, right? I can, don't worry, Andrew, you can catch us on the recording. With I go into the Lego store, I can grab any box off the shelf and put them together in a construction that works. Why? Because every box in that Lego store follows the same grammar of bumps and grooves, so all the pieces fit together. The concept with XAPI then is I can have much more rich conversations than I can with SCORM. And here are the pieces I need to make this work, right? So there you are, you're looking very, very serious and intent. You have a learning record provider. I want you to think of the learning record provider as whatever sends the data. In an e-learning context, whatever sends the data is your e-learning course. But remember, XAPI isn't confined to e-learning. So go ahead, folks, in the chat, what could be a learning record provider? What's something in your environment, a technology tool in your environment that you would love to get data from in order to evaluate your learning experiences? So go ahead and fill up the chat because we're gonna have some good stuff in here. And then you have your content, right? So whatever it is that you're doing, right? Yes, wikis, web pages, eFront, SharePoint, Rise courses, Salesforce, websites, Demo databases, your LMS, yes, can be a data provider. Chatbots, now you're talking my language. Social media, game-based, right? So, okay, loving this. Ooh, Jessica, the loan origination system, right? The actual systems of work. How do I evaluate my learning? By seeing whether or not can, people can do the thing on the job, right? That's the ultimate measure, right? Walk me. All sorts of tools allow us, right? Have data streams that right now, Here's a scroll up folks, scroll up on this stuff. All of these tools have a reporting function. All of these tools have activity, but you know what? You're looking at your data about WalkMe and your data about your LMS and your data about your product documentation, your data about your wiki, your data about your chatbots are all in silos by tool. Your data is all in silos by tool, not by topic, safety, compliance, leadership, right? So when you go to create a rich, robust learning program, but then have to pull the data out about those programs by tool, and they all talk different languages, right? That's not a very mature way to look at how it is that your people are learning. Okay? So there's all sorts of interesting stuff here that we can be looking at when we look across tools. Now, where do I look? Right. So I've got this activity statement. If all of my learning record providers are providing learning records, they're sending them in those rich grammatical sentences we talked about a minute ago. Those are called XAPI activity statements. And if you join a project team, by the end of this cohort, you will have sent activity statements. 
We use data profiles to make sure that we are, that I think of data profiles like the language dictionaries, right? Um, so that uh, we can keep track and our data just isn't all just garbly mess, right? That's advanced topics. We have presentations on data profiles coming up in this cohort. I have to put my data into a place in order to find it. And that place is called a learning record store that is different than the learning management system. They do different things, but LMS and LRS seem very similar. They're separate tools. And then I have other data, right? Other legacy data in my system, in my environment that I need to deal with. And I often need to move my XAPI data downstream in order to connect up with that. So when I have rich sentences, what can I do with them? Well, I can say all sorts of really interesting stuff with my rich sentences. Right? Take a look at this. Some of this is stuff I can get out of SCORM. Some of this I can't get out of SCORM. Right? This is some interesting kind of data and interesting insights that aren't that simple vocabulary. There's all sorts of good stuff in here. And all sorts of rich data. I can do ratings. I can have context. Right? What equipment? what date, where, who the instructor is, all of that, I can cut my data by all of these pieces that you see here on the screen, all of these elements, which allow me to get really, really rich insights. And you know what, what I don't show here, I can also send images, video, text document references using XAPI. I've actually sent an XAPI statement of a banana it wasn't the actual banana, but it was a digital representation of a banana. So think about the fact if I need to be, if my job is to grade bananas for ripe versus not ripe, and I do an exercise by which I pick a banana and then say, this one is ripe, I can submit that for analysis, right? Or a photograph of a diesel engine after I've finished fixing it, right? all sorts of things. Oh my gosh, there's a banana emoji in AirMe. I think that this uh, has kind of made my day. Here's the JavaScript. There's both a human readable and a machine readable component of XAPI. The JavaScript is relatively straightforward if you already know JavaScript. Um, don't freak out if you don't know JavaScript. You don't need it in order to send an XAPI statement because many tools already send this data. But if you're interested in learning about it, you absolutely can. And there are folks around who can do this. You may be thinking, what on earth would I measure? Because many of us have grown up in a SCORM environment. I know I grew up in SCORM. And when you grow up in a SCORM environment, you may not know or think about all the things that you could be measuring. But you know what? Our existing tools and frameworks for measurement and analysis, and these are just two of them. There's lots and lots of stuff, right? And yes, Evelyn, thank you. That's JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, not JavaScript itself. You can send, uh, you can use any programming language as long as you're expressing it in JSON. Um, so thank you for that, uh, that, that gentle nudge. I appreciate that. Right? I can start doing all sorts of things, right? Um, and measuring all sorts of things about the learning experience, about the learning effectiveness, and about the learning results using XAPI. Right. And so these are the kinds of things. This is an inspiration, right? A starting point. These are certainly not the things that you all the things you could measure. But I want you to be thinking about the, the, the same instructional design, learning experience design, learning engineering, evaluation science approaches that you are using. But sometimes unable to measure because your tools and systems don't have that data right? They can inform you on what you could be measuring using XAPI, right? So think about this as a place to go creatively. Um, LTEM stands for Learning Transfer Evaluation Model. Thank you for that question. Um, that is from um, uh, Will Talheimer, and it's a fantastic way of kind of peeling back a little bit further um, into what could be tracked. And let me see if I can get, yeah, here we go. Um, I have a um, link I can paste in the chat um, that has a bunch of links to a bunch of places, one of which is um, uh, an article on the uh, learning transfer evaluation model. So thanks for that, that question and that nudge. So 
Whew. At one point, one of my friends um, threatened to log into my LinkedIn account and change my profile picture to this, right? Because if I could track all the things, why wouldn't we, right? Tons and tons of data, and there are tons and tons of possibility. Um, and um, I will be, right? There's, so there's there's these rich debates, right? Do you track all the things or do you track, do you have a plan and you only track what you need, right? I also will suggest that you don't always know all the things that you need up front. I generally, in a pilot no, mode, in a prototype mode, track a lot of things until I find the things that I find interesting and useful and relevant. And then maybe for production, I might narrow the amount of things that I'm tracking because I also need to be very careful and responsible with my data. Whenever we're talking about an environment in which we're tracking more data, right? We have a higher degree of responsibility about the proper use of that data, right? Um, and so um, there's, there. I, I will, I will give some, some caution there. So XAPI, that is the world's fastest introduction, a very caffeinated introduction to the basics of XAPI. I'm hoping by now you're sitting there thinking, ooh, well, maybe if I use this XAPI thing, I can do this. Or maybe if I do this XAPI thing, I could track whether or not that has a comp an influence on this other thing, or it can help me with my needs analysis, and I can determine whether or not we even need this course, or I can build a course and I can be A-B testing whether or not it's actually worth it to make videos and downloadables and interactive stuff, and whether that has, like, whether people see it or use it, or whether it makes any difference, right? Okay, I'm gonna say a word to all my instructional designers and my e-learning developers out there. You, like me, have probably made courses in which you ask people to do a thing on a screen in the e-learning environment, and you never know if they do it, how well they do it, what they do with it, because we're not tracking the data. Now you have the opportunity to track that data, but you also know Right? You can also track all sorts of things outside of that. And what does that mean, right? Like how are all these things coming together? You now have the ability to have a rich and round and robust look at that learning experience. Right? In fact, Karen, maybe Karen, Karen, can you post the link again to the learning data and analytics um, website? Carla, you're cracking me up, right? Um, <laughs> can you post the, um, the learning data and analytics um, research report because we're talking right now about time spent on a page right that report actually uses the republic platform which uses xapi so what we did was we so jason hag um, from veracity meg fairchild from torrance learning and i uh, got together and we did a learning research report with the, the learning guild the guild does tons of cool research reports um and um in this, right, so we, so we evaluated how are people using learning data and analytics. And then we built a research report and hosted it in a platform on Republic that allows us to collect data and analytics about people reading about data and analytics. Yes, it's super meta and circular here, right? And the cool thing is we're using XAPI and we know where are people spending time on pages. We recorded a bunch of video interviews about this. Do people pay attention to them? Do they actually like look at those? Do people click the links for additional resources from that report? Some of you may be here because of a link that you clicked in that report. Because that report had a link to the cohort. There's one, at least one thumbs up for that, right? That link had a link to the cohort to be able to, to sign up to learn more, right? So there's all sorts of stuff. Um, and in that report, we actually show you some of the data. So it's uh, real-time tracking, okay? So all this may seem a lot. Your heads may be exploding. We've got your back. 
right? There's lots of stuff that we've got here, right? So cohort has three different modes, I think, that you can engage. So one is you are all in, you are working on a project, you are um, spending time, not just your weekly web session here, but you're spending time with the project team, you're making a thing at the end of 12 weeks, you'll have a prototype thing. Believe me, it will not be perfect. You'll have lots of things you wish you had time to keep doing, um, but this is a deep, in-depth, fantastic way to learn. It's how I got my start in, co in, in XAPI, and um, I just like so much learning by doing. Right now, in order to do that, you need to be uh, pretty much a self-starter. Um, you need to be ready to jump in and grab on with a bunch of people or start your own project team. Right? You may want to be in observer mode. You're not actively on a project, but you're kind of like hanging out in the Slack channel and you're in conversations and you're watching what teams are doing and you are learning by watching. In fact, there's a listening in mode or we also call it learning by lurking, right? Learning by lurking, or right? Or listening in is a very low or no commitment way to learn as you go. And a lot of people do that their first time through and then their second time, they're like, all right, I'm ready for a project. And some of you were like, why would anybody like do a thing? I'm just going to, as Bill says, right? Just do the thing, right? Just get in and do it, right? What are the things that you might do? I posted out on LinkedIn yesterday, actually, like asking for um, cohort alumni to share uh, share with us the kinds of things that they have um, done in projects before, right? So uh, Sarah Mercer talked about um, her ebook project and um, Sean Putman talked about his project um, measuring software clicks um, with XAPI. There's been everything from Articulate Storyline, Domino Flow, and Adobe Captivate to Zapier and Twine, um, AR, VR, geolocation, Makey Makey. I think the Makey Makey team did plug in a banana. I'm not entirely sure. Um, connecting one LRS to another, WordPress video, all sorts of stuff, right? One group actually used Zoom, right? at the time we were hosting cohort and Zoom and they measured all the interactions that came off of Zoom from cohort or the Slack from cohort, it was pretty cool, right? So um, as you think about cohort, this is some of you were like, yes, I'm ready for it. Just do it, right? I'm all in, right? Um, you do not need to, I love these questions, keep the questions coming. You do not need to know a programming language because if you are in and you're working with Storyline or Domino or Captivate, okay, you don't need to know XAPI in order to send statements and to see the statements, right? You don't need to know SCORM, right? If you're using H5P, some of that actually does XAPI and you don't have to do the coding for it. Right? You can also join a project team, right? We recommend fully that you join project teams, join a project team and maybe there's some folks there who can code. Maybe you can learn something from them if you want and you wouldn't have to. So don't freak out about code folks. I am not a developer. I do not know where the colons and brackets go, right? Um, but I am absolutely a heavy user of X API, right? So at this point, it is completely okay to not know anything. Right? That, that's what cohort is all about. It's also completely okay to know a lot about XAPI. And I'm looking at folks in the channel here. And I know that there are folks here who know a lot about XAPI. Oh my gosh, right? Chris, Chris Rash. Hi. Uh, Meg Fairchild, right? There's lots of people here who know a lot about XAPI and support, uh, lots of people who don't. Totally okay. All of those are okay places to be, right? It's totally okay to not know anything about coding. It's totally okay to be an expert and not know anything about instructional design. And you're like, ah, how do I create a learning program? Do I just tell people what to do? Right. And those people come together. It's like the chocolate and peanut butter. Right. Um, it's totally okay if you're not sure if you want to do a project, if you don't have any ideas for a project, if you have an idea, or if you want to continue a project that got started in the past. Sometimes projects will span multiple cohorts, right? It's also totally okay to say, oh, yeah, this whole team thing seems very people-y, super time consuming, do not have time for it. That's okay too, stay here in cohort, right? Check up on those weekly emails, come on on a weekly session, um, that's completely fine, 
Okay. You can show up. I'm going to make air quotes late to cohort or to a cohort project. In fact, one of our, our longstanding jokes is it's never too late to join cohort. Now here's some things it's not okay to do in cohort. Okay. It is not okay to sell your stuff in cohort. It's not okay to make it unwelcoming for others. So if a newbie wants to join your project team, welcome them in because that's what this is all about, right? Do not work out loud on your company's proprietary certificate or projects. Please talk to your legal department before you bring a real project from a real company with real people. And you may not sue your teammates for giving you bad ideas, right? So uh, I just want you to be aware of right? What to expect here. This is free. This is open source. This is volunteer. Okay. Um, and so I want you to uh, all be careful, but also get out there and have, do something and have some fun. So Heather asks, how do we find and join a team? Check out the Slack channel. Teams happen in Slack. So you'll go to main and you'll look there. You can also Choose to browse channels and you'll be find all the teams that are started. Join a team. If you, I'll say, if you join a team in Slack, it doesn't mean that you've joined the team, like, and, and, in like, now you're on the hook for something. You can join the Slack channel and just listen and never actually do anything. That's totally okay. Um, Zarka and everybody who's having a hard time with Slack. Karen has got your back. So reach out to Karen. Karen's coming back online um, and uh, here uh, to, to, to wrap us up for the day. But uh, also Karen is pretty much tireless and available for you. And um, I mean, if she's not available, I'm, we're not going to sign her up for 24-7 support, but she's around a lot. So um, I'm glad to have everybody here and have fun at this cohort, folks. Thank you so much, Megan. Yes, uh, Slack seems to be a little glitchy. I posted in the chat there. The link that is on your confirmation page, the link I have posted, seems to not work sometimes and then work sometimes. So I don't know what's up with Slack because I got the same error message you did using you know, something else. So, and then I was able to join. So just keep trying. Um, it, there might be something going on with Slack. If you still have problems, by tomorrow, you can reach out to me and I will get it sorted for you. And I just want to thank you to uh, Megan Torrance here. This was a great, great intro to XAPI. And I can't uh, encourage you guys strongly enough to create those project teams or those learning teams, whatever you want to call them. Like, And someone asked the question, how much time is required to be part of a team per week? that's really up to the team. Some teams will meet once for a half an hour outside of cohort at the tables in the lounge. They'll go, okay, we've got this project. Let's divvy it up. You're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing that. And then they go off asynchronously, do their work, and then come back together. Other teams will talk in Slack and have conversations back and forth on their team channel and post resources or, hey, take a look at this or what do you think about that? So we give you those options to either act with each other asynchronously in Slack or via the tables in the lounge. We want this to be what you want it to be. You want to learn all about it, XAPI, you want to get a project under your belt. I'm sure there'll be a team there. Go ahead, dig dig in, dive in and learn. You wanna be a lurker and kind of sit on the sidelines and kind of watch and maybe join a team and just kind of watch around and lurk, lurk, learning lurker or lurker learning. I can't remember what Megan said there, but feel free because this is a peer community educational learning experience and we would love for you to just dive in we love to have you join any team that you would like and then uh so there okay so team someone is answering for me which is great so there'll be hashtag teams we want you to create your own there are a few already created one having to do with a project that megan torrance's um people will be working on and helping you with that. There's also a team beginner. We have uh, some uh, cohort participants from previous cohort who are gonna lead you into the absolute beginning 
stages of XAPI. You don't know anything. I don't even know what XAPI stands for. I don't know what a learning record. They're going to take you through that. And we're going to get started with that as we progress through cohort here. And just in case, create your own meaning, create a team or create a tree. Right, exactly. You, you, you can work solo if that's your jam, you know, jam, whatever. But you can also create your team. You go to the Slack, you go to the channels, create channel, just as long as you preface, it'll always come up with the hashtag, preface it with team and then whatever it is, team Karen, team spring cohort storyline, team um, Camtasia, key, team whatever. Um, yes, it is in Slack nothing for teams there is it's under the channels because there are a couple of hashtag teams already created therefore hopefully you will see that and maybe if you don't see it in slack maybe it's still glitching with some of the other things so i i have no control over that i'm sorry if i could i'd fix it but anyways we've gone over time uh any other questions feel free to reach out to me and I would either in Slack, if you happen to be able to get into Slack, if you can't get into Slack, there's my email address. Go ahead and reach out to me. Thank you so much, everyone. Dig deep. And there are some resources on that confirmation page that I did uh, post for you that you, was there when you joined. Let me just put that in really quickly because there's a couple articles and of course that research report we did put in there. So just make sure there's a, a couple things here. Just jump into Slack, introduce yourself in hashtag main, talk amongst yourselves, say, hey, I'm thinking about doing a project. Get some other people, create the team and go. All right, anything else, Megan? Nope, I'll see y'all in the cohort. All right, guys, bye-bye.